Friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, March 21st. I'm Pastor Mariah Furness Tolgard, and on behalf of Hamlin Church United Methodist, thank you for joining us for worship today. I am so glad that you are taking time to come to worship this day. I know for many of us, this has felt like a heavy week, a week of deep sadness and pain in our world that we carry with us into our practice of worship today. As we begin, I want to be mindful of the pain and anguish that has been experienced this week in Atlanta and those who mourn the death of eight people, including six Asian women. The world grieves, God grieves, we grieve, right? Along with those who have lost loved ones and grieve especially the sin of violence against women and violence against Asian Americans. And so it is, we come to worship as a time of lament, of prayer, of asking for God's intervention in the ways of this world, and as a means of collectively sharing our grief and opening ourselves up to new ways of being. Worship is a gift from God that restores our souls. This Lent, we have been following a Lenten journey called the way of love, looking at love as a rule of life. And it is most fitting that this week we return to this practice and this journey and this week take up the act of rest as a spiritual practice for centering our lives. As we worship today, I invite you to follow along in the worship guide that is posted on the live stream page of our website and that is also posted in the comments section if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. There you'll find the order of worship for this week as well as a devotion guide that you can use for your own reflection in the week ahead. We also invite you to take a moment to share if you are watching on Facebook or YouTube or push like or to send the link of the service to a friend or loved one and let uh, invite these other folks in to join us for worship as well. If you're watching live with us on Facebook or YouTube, we encourage you to comment in the comment section to greet one another with good morning and the peace of God and to also share any prayer requests that you may have. I want to ask that everyone take just a minute to fill out the connection card that's also posted on the live stream page and in the comment section to let us know that you're worshiping with us and that's also a place to uh, ask to be signed up for our weekly uh, email list, as well as to sh ask any questions or share prayer requests. Friends, we come to this space of grace. We come to center our hearts for worship and to feel connected with God, with one another, and with all creation. Let us worship together. O oh God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be our strength, by the might of you, Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence where we may be still, and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Apart from the world 
seek God's grace, come away with me. And pray with me on a gentle sea on top of a hill in the Galilee. In gardens like Gethsemane, come away with me. Today, with thoughts of the countless ways that God's steadfast love blesses all our days, and join with me in silent praise, come away with me. Whispered from your soul the feelings and actions you can't control. Your spirit needs to be made whole. Come away with me. Come away. Come away. Waiting to embrace all those who come in hopes of grace. Come away with me, come Hello, fellow Hamlin Church members. My name is Leah Welch, and I'm delighted to honor World Down Syndrome Day with you today. You may be familiar with an organization called L'Arche from the spiritual writings of Henry Nouwen, or maybe it's brand new to you. L'Arche is an international federation of communities in which people with and without developmental disabilities live together in mutuality. Before moving home to Minnesota several years ago, I lived and worked in a large community in Seattle, Washington for six years. Larsh is sometimes called a school of the heart. Celebration and joy live alongside of griefs and hurts as sharing life, living space, and the rhythms of the everyday allow for abundant opportunity for both lightheartedness and ongoing forgiveness of oneself and each other. I'm very happy to say that there is a large community beginning in the Twin Cities. Hamlin Church's Lenten theme of the way of love I think is applicable to living large. Daily, the space between us is blessed with our prayers and trying the best we can, as well as our willingness to pause and keep turning toward God and one another, whether that's in delight or in pain. L'Arche allows for a space and experience of love and rest as each person's gifts are named and honored. The following video is a short glimpse into the way of love that is L'Arche. If L'Arche is exciting to you, you are invited to be part of this growing community of friendship. A happy World Down Syndrome Day to each of you on this 21st day of the third month of the year. Vasil Simonenko. Please, 
Ти знаєш, що ти людина. Ти знаєш про це чи ні? Усмішка твоя єдина. Мука твоя єдина. Очі твої одні. Більше тебе не буде завтра на цій землі. Інші ходитимуть люди, інші кохатимуть люди. Добре, та скажуть, зліг. Сьогодні усе для тебе. Озеро, гаї, степи. І жити, спішити треба. Бо ви на землі – людина. І хочете цього чи ні, усмішка ваша єдина. Мука ваша єдина, очі ваші одні. Thank you, Leah, for your ministry and your witness to the work that you do and that God does through you with the La Arche community here in the Twin Cities. We are entering now into a time of prayer, so I invite you to take a deep breath. Settle in. And my friends, I have said in Facebook and some other to you that my heart has been hurting by what has happened in Atlanta this past week and the anti-Asian sentiment that is rising and the hate crimes rising. And so for the first part of our prayer, I would like for us to close our eyes and center our, our siblings of Asian descent and lift them up to God for protection and love. Please join me in a couple seconds of silence. Amen. Thank you. As we continue this time of prayer, you may remember that throughout Lent, we've been doing our loving kindness meditation each Sunday as our spiritual practice. And this is a meditation taken from our Buddhist siblings where we focus on the compassion for self and for others. 
And so for today, um, I thought I'd share with you something called the hugging mindness, kindness, hugging kindness meditation. And this is because my way of giving and showing, of showing and receiving love is through hugging. And this past year with COVID, um, we've been showing our love by not hugging one another. But when I found this practice, it centered me for those of us who are missing that connection. And so my friends, please take a deep breath. Center yourselves and find a quietness inside. And if you could put one hand on your shoulder and another hand on your shoulder and give a squeeze. Or you may find that another position is more comfortable and accessible to you, that is okay. The idea is that you are giving yourself a hug. And as you are doing this, say these words with me. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be at peace. You can pause and do this for as long as you like. And when you are ready, in your minds, I think of someone who you love, who you miss, who needs a hug. And as you are seeing this person in your mind, open up your arms. Take a deep breath. And then imagine hugging them. And as you are feeling this and seeing this and experiencing this, say these words with me. May you be happy. May you be well. May you be safe. May you be at peace. We can do this for as long as you like with as many people as you like in your head and still be COVID safe. This is a way that we can pray for each other and care for each other and have compassion on and for each other. So we do these prayers and meditations because Jesus modeled it for us. Jesus taught us how to pray and how to love and how to be in this world. And so we say these words of the Lord's Prayer together, using the ones that are most comfortable for us and knowing that our ancestors and people before us and present are saying it now. Our Father and Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from ego. For yours is the community and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hello, Hamlet. I'm Sharon Fields. Today, I will be reading from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, 
hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and you will cause flesh to come upon you and to cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am Lord. So I prophesied as had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and the flesh had come upon them and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesize to the breath, prophesize mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesize and say to them, thus says the Lord, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am Lord. When I open your graves, you shall live. I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to start today with a confession. A few days ago, I bought a vacuum cleaner in the middle of the night. It wasn't exactly on purpose, but it wasn't entirely an accident. I mean, we've been needing a vacuum for some time now, and I had been researching the best one to get. You can imagine my Google search, best vacuum cleaners plus girls with long hair plus golden retriever. And I had even put a couple in my online shopping cart. I had just never gotten around to putting it to the top of my to-do list and making the final decision. And then one night, I had stayed up entirely too late working on something, not researching vacuums. And when I finally did go to bed, I couldn't fall asleep. And I was getting more and more frustrated, or maybe it was that I had fallen asleep for a little while and then woke back up, you know, when you're not quite sure if you had been asleep, but now you're awake again. And I was not fully awake or, or fully asleep. And well, at some point it came to me that I should, I guess, at least get something done. So laying in bed, phone in hand, at some point in all that, I decided that it was the right moment to click by now. And so I did. I bought two vacuum cleaners in the middle of the night. Yes, two vacuums. I, of course, had only meant to buy one, but clearly I wasn't in the best state of mind during my midnight online shopping. And this week we are talking about rest and rest as a spiritual practice on the way of love. So this clearly is an example of what happens with a lack of rest. My friends, of all the spiritual practices we've covered so far on our Lenten journey, prayer, learn, turn, bless, we might find all of those easier to integrate into our lives on a regular basis than today's practice of rest. I know that's true in my case. We do not live in a culture that encourages rest. All too often we live and work at a pace that is not only void of rest, but is based on glorifying busyness. 
This is even true in the pandemic. I remember way back a year ago at the beginning of all this, and when I first heard that people were quarantining for two weeks, and, and I thought, wow, quarantine sounds great. I could get so much done, catch up on so much at work and at home. Well, as it turns out that quarantining or sheltering in place or whatever it is, doing any of that with three kids while completely redesigning how to do charts and amidst a backdrop of a global health and economic crisis, well, none of this does uh, makes a ripe environment for productivity or rest. Now, I know in our congregation that there are as many unique experiences of this past year of pandemic living as there are individuals. I know that for some of us, this has been a busy and overwhelming time of life. And that for others of us, it has been a season of boredom and monotony. And for many of us, it's been all of these things at some point. No matter how much or how little you had on your calendar or your to-do list, I would venture to guess that it has not been a restful time for anyone. Rather, I think we have all been living in a state of pandemic restlessness, marked by overconsumption of information and media, constant stress and anxiety from ongoing fear and uncertainty, sleep problems, and general fatigues brought on by living under restrictions. Restrictions that we know are important for health and safety, but can also just feel like a drag. As someone said recently, I am tired of living through historic moments. Friends, today I want to invite you to a countercultural way of being to claim the spiritual practice of rest as a priority that is essential to living the way of love as your rule of life, to claim the spiritual practice of rest as a gift from God. And we do this because this is the way that God intended for it to be. The God who loves you, who made you, and who has plans for you, this God does not want you to be overtired or overwhelmed, restless or stressed. Because you see, you are beloved of God. God wants to bless you and through you bless the world. Bless, use all of us to bless others. In fact, God made us so that we function best when rest is not an afterthought, but rather core to our existence. Our bodies, science tells us, need to rest regularly. Our brains need rest to process and integrate all of the data and experiences we take in during the day. Studies have shown that people who take regular breaks from work have higher rates of creativity and productivity. And our spirits need our bodies and minds to rest so we can be creative and recreative. Rest is woven into the whole fabric of creation. Even the ground needs fallow time to build up nutrients again and be fruitful. In our creation story, even God took a rest on the seventh day. This was to set rest into the pattern of all of life. Clearly, we have seen the consequences that human disregard for rest has taken on our earth, as evidenced by climate change and its devastating impacts. Rest even made it into the commandments, and there are only 10 of those. People were ta to take a Sabbath day each week just to worship and recharge. This Sabbath principle is also deeply ingrained into God's sense of justice. Traditionally, on the seventh day, everyone got to rest. The poor as well as the wealthy, the young and the old, the immigrants and citizens. As we re read in our scriptures, our faith tradition even commanded a jubilee year 
Every seven years when debts would be canceled and people could return to their lands. We see this in the Gospels more than once, where Jesus, our ultimate teacher of compassion and love of neighbor, even he retreated to a place of Sabbath to reconnect with God and to receive the strength he needed to continue in ministry. Resting, in fact, is an act of love for self and love for neighbor. Because through rest, as Bishop Michael Curry says, God invites us to dedicate time for restoration and wholeness within our bodies, minds, and souls, and within our communities and institutions. By resting, we place our trust in God, the primary actor who brings all things to their fullness. If God rested, if Jesus rested, why on earth wouldn't we think we can too? The act of rest and restoration is a part of the cycle of rebirth that is God's hope for us and gift to us. I love the story that we heard from Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones. Here, God sent God's breath, the Holy Spirit, onto a field of bones That very breath was enough to reanimate them and bring them back to the fullness of life. Making Sabbath rest has the same impact. Sabbath rest provides the opportunity for God to refresh us, to breathe new life into us. When we neglect Sabbath time with God, we can begin to feel withered and tired, just like those dry bones. This is no coincidence. When we fill our lives with busyness, when we fill our minds with clutter and our ears with constant noise, without breathing and returning to God, we become depleted and dry. As spring emerges and more and more people are vaccinated, woohoo! we feel anxious to get out and do things. I know I feel it too. We want to be out in the world and to return to the way things used to be. I imagine it as sort of a breath coming over the dry bones kind of moment, calling out to those of us who are ordering vacuums in the middle of the night, those of us who are doom scrolling on our electronic devices, those of us who are glazed over with Zoom fatigue, those of us who are feeling run down by online school, and those of us feeling depleted by having to decide yet again what to make for dinner. But now, this spring, the breath of God is coming upon us with an invitation to new life. Just as it's certain that the snow will melt and the grass will grow and the daffodils will bloom, new life is possible for our dry bones. And when we really stop to think about it, there's probably a lot of how life used to be that we don't necessarily want back or that we could live without that we don't necessarily want to continue with an addiction to productivity, that we don't necessarily want to return to overscheduled ways of life or of constant busyness or of being defined by what we do instead of who we are, that we don't want to continue in a society that takes advantage of the most oppressed among us in order that just a few might have wealth and abundant life. That we no longer want to continue living with only minimal time available for who and what matters most. The new life that the Holy Spirit, the breath of God has put in the air, invites us to start with the practices that align with Sabbath and rest to center family and health and relationships, to claim the gift of Sabbath rest first in our lives, 
to give it priority and then fill in the rest from there. The breath of God coming across our dry bones brings us an invitation to rebirth this spring right along with God's good creation. My friends, this is a moment of intentionality. How might you reorient yourself to rest? This may look different for each of us. I know not every one of us has the luxury of long breaks and vacation or even days off. But I believe a practice of rest is possible and essential for all of us. So my friends, how will you make Sabbath a central practice of your life? When will you rest? What do you who do you need to support you? I'd love to help you in any way can, that I can. What will you do or not do? Where in your day can you build in some time for rest? Maybe reflection and prayer, maybe just not thinking at all. Maybe there are even restorative practices that we have taken up during the pandemic that we want to keep, be it regular walks in the neighborhood or weekly phone calls or Zoom calls with friends or relatives who live far away. Maybe it's family movie night or a short walk at lunchtime. Where in your week can you imagine taking a Sabbath day? Where in your year can you take some downtime for a weekend or a week? Sabbath as restoration and renewal for all creation. Sabbath as rest for our bodies, minds, and souls. Sabbath as justice and love for our neighbors. Friends, this is the world as God intends for it to be. To take up the spiritual practice of regular rest is an act of deep faith. It reminds us that God is God and we are not. It helps us to remember it's not all up to us and that all of the stuff that keeps us from resting, like even ordering vacuum cleaners in the middle of the night, is usually not that which matters most in life. Friends, truly practicing the way of love means spending time with God in Sabbath rest. So my prayer for you this week is that you may find rest. Receive the gift of Sabbath. And my prayer for our community is that we can be a community that encourages and practices and celebrates the gift of Sabbath. May the breath of God come upon our dry bones and stir us to new life. In the love and light of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, Hamlin Church friends. My name is David Kazizik. I'm the director of music here, and this is Justin Spinner, and this is Brandon Galbraith, and we are joined by the house band. When I saw the scripture that was picked for this morning, I knew the song that we had to do. This is Dry Bones as performed by the Delta Rhythm Boys. And fun fact, I just returned from vacation from the Mississippi Delta region. And why would I have traveled to the Mississippi Delta region, you asked? Well, I was born there. So here is the Delta Rhythm Boys, Dry Bones.
As we come to the end of our worship today, I want to take just a moment to thank everyone who was a part of putting together today's service. Special thank you to Leah Welsh for sharing her experience with the L'Arche communities and to our house band and all of our musicians for the gift of music as always. And my thanks to Heather for leading us in prayer and to our all who helped to edit and put together our service today. Just a couple of notes as we wrap up and a special invitation to Holy Week. Next week marks the most holy week in all the entire Christian year. And I hope that you will be a part of this experience with our, your Hamlin Church community. The events begin on Saturday, March 27th, with a Holy Week drive through from 11 to 12 here in the church parking lot. You can drive through to pick up your palms for Palm Sunday, as well as a special Holy Week uh, devotional kit. We also have a, a one designed just for kids as well. And there's going to be a wonderful treat. Many of you uh, remember and uh, love our tradition of having pretzels on Palm Sunday, and this this year we are going to have pretzels once again. Palm Pretzel Sunday. Uh, the pretzels this time are not from our bread oven, but from a local uh, small business and baker in the neighborhood. And so we encourage you to come out for your pretzels and your palms. And also want to remind you that this uh, drive through will conclude our uh, March food drive. And so we are inviting people to bring uh, change and uh, for our loose offering, our noisy offering, as it's called, that you can throw in the bucket and help to contribute to Keystone Emergency Services. We will, of course, take uh, dollars and things that make less noise as well. Uh, but so see you next Saturday here in the church for the drive through from 11 uh, to 12. And then back again on Palm Sunday for online worship at 10 a.m., uh, followed by coffee hour as usual. And then I also encourage you to look ahead to the events throughout the week, including our Monday, Thursday service on uh, 
on Thursday night at 7 and our invitation to come to the sanctuary on Good Friday for time in the silence and beauty of the sanctuary as well as some musical offerings. And then, of course, celebrating on Easter morning with online worship at 10 a.m. and then here at the church at uh, from 11.30 to 1 for Worship Unbundled on the front lawn with hot crust buns from the brick oven and uh, an Easter egg hunt for all ages and some wonderful music. You can find all of that and more on our website and on our social media, as well as in our weekly email. Lastly, want to invite everyone to uh, jump over to Zoom Coffee Hour because today we are having a special town hall forum led by our church council. And it's a state of the church kind of address in which we will uh, talk about uh, our COVID reentry plan. I know many folks are getting anxious to get back to church as uh, more and more people are getting vaccinated and uh, we are looking at those kinds of possibilities as well as updates on uh, our our mission and ministry and uh, financials and our uh, updates from the trustees on our building and grounds as well. So hope you can uh, click on the link and join us for just a while on uh, Zoom coffee hour for this special conversation and town hall forum with our church council. So my friends, go forth into this week with your dry bones, whatever it is that brings weariness to your soul and hold them up to the breath of God, to the Holy Spirit who brings love and light, who calls us to rest so that we might be restored for the fullness of creation to bring about the world as God intends for it to be. Go forth to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Amen. The postlude is a Lenten hymn from 1628. The tune was also used in larger works by Bach and Handel and Brahms and Liszt. Mm -hmm. 